reason and conscience have long been absent, art allies itself with communication technologies to touch the public unconsciousness captured by the politics of hate. It is in the field of micropolitics that media art will fill the field of news with sensitivity and corporeality in order to impact the alterity of a heartless Brazil that emerged from the 2016 coup. In October 2017, when the news about the political suicide of the Federal University of Santa Catarina's president, Luiz Carlos Cancelier, was no longer able to awaken the Brazilian population from their coliseum of hate, Artivist Clélia Mello launched a provocative urban intervention on the university campus called Who Killed the President? Cancelier's sacrifice denounces a country in growing suppression of the rule of law over which hangs the first corpse of the policy of demoralization and destruction of public educational institutions. Four years later, still under the impact of this event, we are still learning from it and trying to understand what happened. Our considerations took form by an artistic manifesto that we call Cine Noticia. To produce this manifest, we also intertwined our specific experiences as an artivist filmmaker, an independent journalist and a philosopher that resulted in an approximation between art, media, and technology. Who killed the president? The intermittent question of the luminous sign that this new cinema projects at nightfall on the campus accomplishes the paradoxical synthesis between the opening of art and the definition of journalistic fact. It opens up a field of enquiry around a definitive statement, a hidden truth that Cancelier's suicide characterizes a state assassination, something like revealing an unspeakable secret. Deeply connected to micropolitics, this manifestation returns to the anesthetized social body of the university. It takes place as well in a scenario of rise of new fascism in Brazil, in which the strategies to destroy the parameters of truth and justice generate a dramatic impossibility of consensus. No rational effort at communication seems to be able to transpose there a kind of incommunicability of hatred established in public opinion political, legal, police and media violence that destroyed the president's life generates a paralysis of action and dialogue, challenging the field of art and communication to find languages in the field of the sensitive to break the impasse. Among the facts that happened in the Brazilian political scene after the coup against President Dilma Rousseff, none expose this media, legal and police violence in such a clear way as the lawfare processes. The university's president's moral stoning shows in an exemplary way of how new fascism updates the Coliseum model, inciting public opinion's hatred of its enemies. It manipulates procedures and the legal system to give the appearance of legality to the persecution of representatives of institutions that oppose authoritarianism and the exclusionary economic model. The anti-corruption banner serves as a smokescreen to justify the destruction of public institutions of higher education as systems that promote pluralistic knowledge, critical thinking and social inclusion. It was up to art to contract the media rationality, impoverished of ethical sense, making use of aesthetic and philosophical strategies to bring out a felt reflection or a sensitive knowledge of the experience. In other words, recalling consciousness, provoking the imaginary unconscious. Recapitulating the events. In the early hours of September 14, 2017, 
the Federal University of Santa Catarina was shaken by the unexpected invasion of a 105-man squad from the Federal and Military Police. They entered in all areas of the campus, seizing documents and computers. Simultaneously, this apparatus knocked on the door of the residence of President Luis Carlos Cancelier and of six other servers, five professors and a technician. Not without first sending messages to the city's journalists' mailing list informing about the operation to ensure coverage in the execution of the arrests. Detained in his apartment, still wrapped in a bath towel, the president was handcuffed and shackled and taken to a maximum security prison in the capital, where he donned an orange uniform and was subjected naked to an embarrassing intimate search in front of other inmates. Deprived of his medication for severe heart disease, Cal, as he was known, spent 30 hours in prison. It was enough to traumatize the son of a poor worker and a seamstress from a city in the countryside, who was proud of his training as a doctor of law and his ascending career at the university. In just over two decades, Cal became professor head of the department, director of the center, and finally president at the age of 59. With no legal process, the courts cut all these ties with work and academic life after prison. Banned from office and from the classroom, the professor was also banned from approaching the university campus. At the same day, deputy Erika Marena protagonist of the car wash operation and the federal judge Janaina Cassol, who authorized the prison, gave an interview to give visibility to the action. The university's president had been denounced to the federal police by the general broker of the Federal University of Santa Catarina, Rodolfo Riquel do Prado, with the allegation that he was trying to obstruct the investigations within Deaf Ears Operation, Operação Ouvidos Mocos, which was investigating alleged misuse of funds from the Open University of Brazil program. On the website of the Federal Police and in the headlines of the major television networks, the president was accused of stealing 80 million reais destined to the program of distance education. This scandal caused his moral lynching on social media. It would soon be known that the amount did not correspond to the amount under suspicion, but to the entire budget of, for the program of online education in the previous 10 years. It was also known that the amount investigated was not 80 million reais, but 80,000 reais and was referred to the period from 2006 to 2017, thus not coinciding with the term of Cancelier as a president. Cancelier's involvement in possible irregularities has never been proven, but to this day the Brazilian state has not recant before the family, brothers and son. Responsible for the investigation, Deputy Erika Marena worked as a branch of the car wash operation in the south of the country, starting with this action in Santa Catarina, a noisy offensive against public universities. The arrest of a big fish, like the university's president, would be a big step for success. But an untimely event altered the script of the car wash operation mediatic show. After being released from prison by a habeas corpus, Cancelier learned that the public prosecutor would never allow him to resume his position as the president. It would also be morally impossible to return to his law classes. The rise of a police state and the abuses of the car wash operation against the right to defense and presumption of innocence applauded by the mainstream media did not give hope for justice. Lonely, pressed by all sides, he was in panic to leave the house and be recognized 
as the, the president who stole 80 million reais and he went into deep depression. It is something I will never be able to recover from, he told his friend, the journalist Carlos Damião, a few days before climbing up to the fourth floor of the Beira Mar Mall. On Friday noon, October 2nd, the president threw himself from the highest floor, interrupting the flow of shopping with the noise of the impact of his large body on the floor. In the pocket, the driver's license identified the disfigured face and the note left no doubt about the political murder. My death was decreed when I was banned from the university. Impacted by the greater view of events in the field of our micropolitics, we began, each in their specific professional practice, to intervene on the empty space of meaning that followed the tragedy. One of us tirelessly published reports in the independent media denouncing the abuses of power and the process of slander suffered by the president. The other edited a series of 14 films with a large volume of images of newspaper headlines, videos and websites that allowed to reconstitute the multiple lines of the opera of suicide. Captured from the moment of the president's arrest, the images and signs were edited at kinetic speed, without repetition. Each frame lasted one second, totaling more than seven hours of images that showed the jurist, professor and journalist Louis Cancelier before the Kafkaesque process that pushed him into the abyss. Connected, resignified and enhanced, art, media and technology seek to awaken the Coliseum and counter the vertical and authoritarian forms of transmission with more critical, creative and ecological media relations. The day after the suicide, the Floripa Collective against the state of exception was formed among members of many political and social groups, with the aim of demanding justice for Cancelier and combating the abuses of power to which we immediately engaged. These productions were nourished in our political practice and returned to the collective, adding new interventions, discourses and performances to the street demonstrations. The Brazilian political scenario brings to the field of communication a coincidence between reality and dystopia projected by literature and cinema. There is no difference between the fear projected on screen and the journalistic news. The nightmare is the real thing. And the most amazing component of this nightmare is precisely the inability of communication to overcome the spread of lies. The art intervention mirrors our own haunting in the face of political horror and the artist's state of shock works as a historical witness to the ongoing events, facing the absurdity. As a random and hallucinating sequence of frames, the images and signs allow the public to see the outcome of this persecution. It is as if this dizzying rhythm of the images was a carrier of an urgency. The film seeks the speed of algorithms to unveil the official and parallel lies that reach the public through networks and broadcast lists. In line with accelerated background instrumental music, the videos impact the academic post-traumatic night environment as they go public for the first time. Projected on unusual surfaces and dimensions, such as building walls, walls, floors, ceilings. This expanded cinema displaces and expands the field of view in the public space of the university city. In November 2017, the 14 videos were designed in silence in the university's central square, exploring the hall and facade of the president's office and the Federal University of Santa Catarina's events center places of passion and death, where Cancelier's body passed to be veiled. 
The projections in these large spaces disturb the path and the standardized look. They produce an event favorable to the revision of the unconscious and the provocation of the thoughtless, without attempts to filter the messages or impose an a priori positioning. Another tension is presented, based on materiality and evidence of signs taken from naturalized processes of reception and media capture. The work, thus, refuses the traditional aspect that uses expressive elements as a kind of illustration of a given violent situation. It allows each one to build the connection between the elements of the legal media spectacle and answer the persistent question, who killed the university's president? The tragedy of the president showed that while slander proliferates in social media and social networks at the speed of the algorithm, the elucidations never sufficiently rehabilitate the reputation of their victims. Even inside the coffin, Cancelier would be scolded as a thief by a student who leans over the coffin and hit it, screaming. You bastard! Return the 80 million reais you stole from the university. The art that does not lend itself to the service of oppression guesses its failure, but never ceases to fight violence. The exasperated rhythm of images and music incorporates the gesture of despair of the president, who warned with his own death of the dangers of Brazil's authoritarian directions. It is the desperation of art itself.